Hello everyone, this is Lockout S, and welcome to my first impressions of the Sinai map for DCS World. We're going to start off here at the main menu because I figured uh, I started off my complete first impressions, and that includes selecting Sinai as the theme for the uh, main uh, the main menu for DCS. So let's see here. So it says Sinai. The e territory includes the entire Sinai Peninsula, Eastern Egypt, Nile Delta, and the southern part of Israel. The west of Jordan and Saudi Arabia, Palestine, the Gaza Strip. This area includes many air bases, urban areas, a wide variety of landscapes such as mountains, desert, sea, and bays. It also has the river Del the Nile River Delta, which is also like pretty lush and not really not tropical, but it's a pretty lush area of the world. So see here, so we don't have any instant action because it's obviously it's a map. Credits set wallpaper. So here we go. Nice. Got the pyramids here on the map. I don't have the music for Sinai uh, playing, uh, mainly because I actually turn off main uh, menu music just because if you're in the mission editor, you're stuck with whatever music is on here. And if you're in the mission editor for hours, no matter what song is playing, it can get pretty old. So I don't, I can't uh, write the music right now, but this, uh, this is a really cool shot of like the pyramids and like the city in a more modern city in the background and the sun rising uh and it is, the sun is definitely rising because the pyramids are to the west of the nile um and the sun rises it to the east so this is definitely and also and also the city of cairo is around the nile so that's how i know that that's east and this is west so let's get sh straight into the mission editor Create new mission, and the the choo, the map section here has it's starting to direct, get pretty uh, big. I remember when it was just Caucasus, Nevada, Normandy, and yeah, for a while it was for when I first started playing D DCS, it was literally just Caucasus, Nevada, and Normandy. There was no those were your three map options. And then over the years, we got Persian Gulf and all those other ones. So it's, I wouldn't be surprised if in like a couple of years, I'd probably not even a couple, more than a couple of years, I'd probably say, do I'd probably say half a decade out from now, another five years of me playing this game, if we got the map selection almost down to this top uh, text box right here. We're going to go ahead to Sinai. Ooh, that's a really pretty map uh, image here. Usually they have... Like, the channel has, like, the old World War II style, like, the old, like, like, an actual, like, physical map. Syria has, like, it's, like, more, like, Google Earth's, like, 19... I want to say this feels like a map from the 1990s internet. Uh, and then we have Sinai here, which is a much more realistic map, which I really like. Yeah. Like, that's the preamble from the main page. I'm not going to play with this too much. We're just going to have Coalition blue and red but you do actually have up here Egypt is one of like the main factions you have Egypt you can have let's see Israel's on here I'm just gonna put them on blue for just the sake of sanity right now let's see Saudi Arabia you can have them on blue Ukraine if they want to get involved USA because they're involved in everything all that other stuff Okay, insurgents, and hit okay. All right. And I am glad we got the cyanide map. I've been saying a while to a couple of to, um, some of my fellow uh, DCS fans that. I was kind of hoping for a relatively good tempo of releases, and I was kind of worried because we got Normandy a couple of months back, and this we got Normandy 2.0 a couple of months back, and I was kind of getting worried that like May there was nothing in May, but now that uh, we, it's early June and we're actually getting uh, Sin uh, Sinai is pretty good. It's a pretty good sign, I believe. And then hopefully next month would be Strike Eagle, and then hopefully month after that is Phantom. And supposedly, supposedly, we're also supposed to get the the um, 
A6E AI variant coming out sometime this summer. So it might be a while for the map to load in. Um, and I'll probably try to, I'll put a cut in here and I'll see you once the map's fully loaded in. All right, now we're in. And, oh boy, we're in pretty deep, uh, we're zoomed in pretty deep. So let's go out, zoom out and let's see what this map has for us. And it could be very well that this is like the first time this map is loaded in ever for DCS World. So it's kind of being, it's a, let's say it's a major pain, but it's definitely occasionally like fritzing out, jumping around. What's what, what's the way to put it? All right, so I'm back, and this is the first time uh, I, let it, I let the map load in a little bit. Um, the map was, and is occasionally, if you try to move, like, up and down, uh, it does seem to, like, drop FPS pretty heavily if you're trying to go from, like, the very bottom of the map to the very top. Uh, the cool thing is if you zoom fully out, uh, you don't move side to side, you just move up and down, which is pretty neat. It's a pretty big area, turns out. Uh, now the cool, other cool, some of the other cool things. Uh, so if you know the Syria map, the Syria map actually includes uh, Lebanon here, and it has uh, Le uh, Lebanese air uh, air bases here, and it also has uh, Damascus. So the the, the Syria map basically comes down uh, for the cursor I'm in, uh, towards like the middle right of the screen. Uh, comes down here more or less, and then shoots over right about here, I want to say, right underneath uh, Hafia, stops here, ends somewhere, or, and then basically ends, uh, goes further out that way, and then cuts back up. So this it's crazy that there's actually maps now in DCS that actually have uh, overlaying sections. So we'll take a quick Obviously, the fun stuff's down to the south and west, but we'll see what's uh, what they've modeled here so far. Now, obviously, this is the butt end of the map, but we'll see what they have. They have, like I said, there's Be uh, Beirut, and there's the two ADF beacons there. Doesn't look like there's an uh, Beirut International isn't in the game. Uh, I know that there's another air base there. That's not in the game yet. It's not in uh, this map yet. There's another um, Lebanese air field over here somewhere, and that's not in either. But that's okay. Uh, Tyre is there. Damascus and all of its uh, air bases and air fields around it are in. And you can definitely see it there would be because there's definitely the ADF beacons for them right there and some of the... Uh, I think that's Damascus International, and I think that's one of the Damascus air bases for the Syrian Air Force there and there. And it's interesting because if you zoom out, you can definitely see there's Lebanon, there's Israel. And then there's, I think that's like the UN deconfliction zone or something right here. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. Maybe it's like a buffer zone that the UN set up, like kind of like the uh, No Man's Land in, or the 30 to 4, 39th or 36th parallel, 36th parallel, the 36th parallel in Korea, where it's a uh, basically a No Man's Land. Can't believe I forgot the name of it. No, it'll, it'll come to me after I upload this video. Typical YouTuber brain. Uh, Looks like this is interesting. Looks like there's a SAM site here in Israel and over there in Israel. Hafia's airport, which would be right here, isn't modeled. But this looks like the town is.
So that's just the Agali. That's Nazareth. Oh, that's interesting. So Nazareth is actually in our DCS world map for a serial. I'll have to see if I can find it on there. But I know um, Ramat David Air Base in uh, Syria is somewhere around here. I don't know why. I guess they just didn't model it here because it's so far outside the normal, so far outside their area of focus. But Ramat David, if they ever include it, should be here. Heading towards. Is this Tel Aviv? This might be Tel Aviv down here. The infamous. Yep, Tel Aviv. Yep, that's Tel Aviv down there. So let's go to satellite. And we get. Sidiv Dove. Looks like that's a. More of a smaller civilian airport. Lots of small sidings there. Could probably use it for military air. Well, no, it's probably for military aircraft because they have these sidings. So I guess this is also a smaller military air base here. Tel Aviv, there's that. There that is. Uh, ben Gurion, which I know is one of the one of their main uh, international air. Yeah, I know that's a main airport in Israel. Looks like those are the uh, airport terminals there. Lots of parkings here at Ben Gurion. Just wondering if there's any. Okay, there's. A... Maybe that's a cargo terminal. I think that's uh, Ben Gurion, which is definitely in one of major airport there. Again, possible Israeli air base here. Now this is interesting because this air base has a very short. Um, a zero three left runway, but a very long zero three right runway. So I wonder if this is um, mixed use air base here. You could definitely have you probably use this for the helicopters and then use this for the actual uh, fixed wings. Uh, Myron, Tel Noif, or Noif. Interesting air uh, airport design. You have. Oh, that's a that's just a taxiway. That's just a taxiway that goes left and uh, left and right, and a long one that goes down the middle. You have this super long runway that goes due north and due south, which is interesting. It's definitely an air base with how they designed out how they have the taxiways and parkings laid out, and those are helter hardened shelters. So this is definitely an air base. Looks like they also have two. Um, Runways off to the side here. 33R, 33 left. So left and right runways on bearing heading 33. And then one here bearing 36. Now obviously the reciprocals would be 180 or so 18. And then 15, 15. So I'm guessing this is going to be an interesting air base to use. Um, I'm imagining that if you needed to scramble, you'd have half of these air, all these aircraft would go here take off this way and have aircraft also on these run heading off of these runways take off there so that way they're deconflicting when they take off it's interesting that also has ILS and attack hand which is good uh, Ben Gurion also has attack hand which is good just want to see you know uh, Jordan doesn't have any air bases yet don't know, I don't know if they'll get any uh, Hatzor I'm going to assume this is a military air base because they have a left and a right and funky parkings and all over the place. Yep, that's another air base with an ILS and a TACAN. Okay, so that's Israel right there. Quite sure that this is the West Bank. Yep, that's the West Bank. Right there. 
Obviously, Jerusalem right smack dab in the middle of it. That'd be interesting to fly over. All right. Ooh, yay. My FPS tanked there just a bit. And then Bethlehem right below Jerusalem. We have Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Nazareth. So all the big biblical cities are all right here. This is going to be another... That's the Dead Sea. And now that you, uh, and using the actual map map, you can actually find out where um, the quote unquote hidden or missing air bases are, which is pretty funny slash uh, unique. But, you know, I don't mind. We're getting a lot of air bases. And like I said, this is sort of like, this is supposed to be the northeastern side of it. So we might get other ones later. Interesting that there's no airport for Jerusalem. I wonder if it's because it's too tight or they're worried about shenanigans going on in that city. Uh, lots of... I definitely have to make a flight around this area to see what's all up in that area. Okay, now this is a very interesting situation. We have some more air bases. I'm guessing these are air bases down here. Or, because there's Kadem. Or Kadem. I'm quite sure, quite sure I'm going to butcher the pronunciations of all these uh, air bases. That, that's definitely an air base with its layout. Right next to Hatzerim. Two runways. Lots of parking. Holy, yeah, that, yeah, lots of, definitely lots of parking. Hardened shelters, uh, lots of parking. Especially because once you start getting it to 119 and like oh, 200, like 120, 125, 130, and that's a lot of aircraft for parking. So, and this one looks like it has an ILS beacon, which is also good. Uh, Navitum. Oh, this is gonna be Navitum is interesting. This is one of those air bases that's like pretty well spread out. There's three runways. There's a 07 here. And there's another set of, that's 08, L and left and right. So I'm guessing they're out there offset by just a degree, which is interesting. Looks like the one is longer than the other. So maybe you uh, can take off from the one and then do recovery ops on the other. Again, lots of these hardened aircraft shelters, which is neat. And then we have Vermont Air Base with a TAC in and ILS. Lots of really spaghettified taxiways with lots of hardened aircraft shelters, which is unique. In fact, these are almost all hardened aircraft shelters, which is different where the other ones have a mixture this is all hard in your base hard in shelters Gora okay this maybe is like a destroyed air base because it looks like all of these hardened shelters are bombed out that'd be an interesting take for DCS plus um, I do know something that I've learned fairly recently is when uh, when an airstrip or an, when an airstrip is not in active use anymore, they put these uh, white X marks on it so you know not to land on them. So it looks like there's an abandoned runway here, and then you only use this runway here to land here. So I guess this maybe uh, this is an ex military air base, and then they just decided to convert it into a small civilian airport. Just good, at least getting some use. And let's see here, map. Okay, so El so that's the border right there with Israel. Or, 
Gaza Strip. It's more appropriately, this is closer to the border than Gaza Strip and Israel. It's a little trifecta right around there. Obviously, Gaza Strip doesn't have its own airport. It does have a couple of heliports there, at least. So let's finish up our trip down here. This is the other side of the Mediterranean, and then this is to it's getting toward the Red Sea. So we have Elot, this little port town here. Some navigation beacons and markers here, which will be useful. Looks like this was at using the satellite imagery that they made. It looks like this was at maybe a maybe at one time this was an air base or airport. It's unique. It's probably like an older air base or whatever, and then he just got rid of it over time. Lots of ADF beacons there. Ovda. Again, I guess another military air base. There's all these hardened aircraft shelters and sidings everywhere. It makes sense. Israel does have a relatively big air force for its, si for its uh, size. So, and a lot of these airports are military airport bases. So now we're going to go from Israel to Egypt. And it looks like, before I go any too much further, it looks like the southern bit of Egypt here is, is pretty much empty. And it looks like all the air bases in Egypt are to the uh, are into the uh, near the Nile River Delta, which makes sense. Al Arish, interesting layout. You have this is one of the I, I keep on this is one of those airport designs you think as a one off on one map and then you get other maps and you realize it's just an, a very uncommon one. This reminds me of Krasnodar Pavinsky, where you have one runway here and then another runway sort of the one end of the one runway has a taxiway at the very end going all the way to the beginning of another runway on the other side and then going all the way up. So there's like a very uh, wide berth between the two runways, but also this like very long spindly taxiway in between the two. So that'll be interesting. So there's a uh, guessing these are parkings here. So you have parking there. You have one, you have one little runway there. Oh, those are hardened shelters for military aircraft. Plus other just places to park, I guess. So maybe this is a combined military side and civilian side runway or air base, which is interesting. Let's take care of these two down here and then work our way back up through the Sinai Peninsula. More ADF beacons in the middle of nowhere for navigating, which is nice. St. Catherine in the middle of the mountains. Well, this is a tiny little civilian airport. Just one simple runway, just a couple of buildings around it. And then the town of, yeah, I guess that's the town of St. Catherine right there. Abdu Rudis. Tiny little commuter airport right here. Three little parking spots there. Probably not a lot of services uh, or need for a lot of aircraft or services out here, but it's a cute little air, it's a cute little airport on the Red Sea. Beer Hanesh. This is interesting. Looks like there's revetments protecting these parking spots. Although, these are really thin spots for an aircraft. I want to spot an eight. Oh, no. No, they're actually... No. My eyes deceive me. They're actually decently... Because an 810 is fairly wide. See if the the turkey can 
Okay, so yeah, no, an aircraft can't fit there quite comfortably. Okay. So we're going to keep you on the map for right now. Because... We have plans for you. So that's uh, Bir Hashna. I guess that's a Egyptian military air base with a couple of revetment protected parking spots. Malez. I guess that's another air base. Again, you have these hardened aircraft shelters there, there, and pretty much everywhere. Well, you do have these uh, parking spots here. Maybe, so this is, again, this might be one of those uh, dual uses where they have uh, international or uh, civilian traffic here. And then you have this side of the air base dedicated to just military aviation. Which makes sense. It's Malaise. And then on the last air base on this side of the, the Suez Canal is Belusa. I guess that's a commuter airport. Tiny little. Not even like. This doesn't even have any runway markings, which is interesting. Like these three little like parking spots here. You go across here, then you go here, and then I guess you can uh, pull off to this little siding area here, and then like wait here, and then get, that way uh, you get more room and time for our aircraft to take off and land on here without blocking any blocking the runway for too long. So that's a very interesting airport design. I like this little bit here where a lot of these smaller airports, it's just like a tiny little taxiway into the middle of the runway, and then you have to wait for any aircraft that want to land or take off. Otherwise, you have to wait for uh, that one aircraft that crosses in. So I go down to the butt end of the runway, turn around, and then take off. This is pretty cool where you can like, just get onto the runway just for a little bit and then get off and then wait here for the, the other aircraft to do their business. That's pretty cool. All right, now this is where I'm guessing all of the Egyptian airports and air bases are. I can I see lots of Takan, and Takan usually means military air bases. So interesting choice here. It looks like there's individual parkings, and I guess depending on which way the aircraft parks, you can use either right or left. Although I think in DCS they always point you in the same direction, so it's going to be interesting to see which air, uh, which way they'll actually force you to go. Lots of parking for lots of different aircraft there, there which makes sense because it's near the border with Israel. Al Mansura. Hardened aircraft shelters. Runway is going off in two directions, which is pretty unique. In the sense that this time, the one runway goes this way, but the other runway starts like a little bit after that one starts. It's not like they're separated by any way. They're actually relative. It's, re it's a relatively split. It's a relatively compact uh, V formation runway, I guess you would call it. Where like the one actually kind of like meshes up against the other one pretty tightly, which is pretty interesting. Definitely not going to, I do have to say, you're definitely not going to have any trouble navigating around uh, the Sinai map. It might be a fairly big map. I'll have to uh, take the measurement from uh, corner to corner as well as from, like, uh, for, further, like, northeasternmost to further, I guess, southwesternmost airbase to see, like, its effective, like, distance. But for as big as this map is, there's a lot of Tachyon stations you can sh tune into on both sides, which is also rare. But I guess that makes sense because Egypt and Israel both use uh, American aircraft now, so they both would have Takan stations to navigate land and do all that kind of other fun stuff with. Azarik. Azku. Uh, that airbase. Uh, again, it looks like twin runway design. Uh, lots of hardened aircraft shelters, so you're definitely going to need to bring your bunker bushers if you want to deal with aircraft inside them. But holy crap, I'm also noticing with this uh, map, a lot of the air bases on this map have two runways. Not just one, but two runways. Which is going to be interesting. So make sure you know 
that when you come to an error base like this, um, make sure you specify right or left. So then that way, uh, people can, uh, your ATC can better, you can better coordinate with your ATC traffic. Um, but also, that's good because you can uh, you can take off and land two aircraft um, at the same time if you're coordinated. All right, let's see here. Did we did? I think we did. Oh, sh I want to say we did that. Yeah, we did that one. All right, we're moving on down south here. Try and knock off the air bases here near Suez, and then we can go towards Cairo. Abu. So are two smaller, they look like they're two smaller runways. Again, interesting design here where uh, a V-shaped formation of the runways, but one is kind of like, one is kind of touching the other here at the end. Lots of some hardened shelters there. Lots of open parking, so it's another air base. This little... So it looks like the so that's the Suez Canal. Now this is interesting because looks like halfway through the Suez Canal, looks like there are these islands in the middle of the canal, which is uh, interesting. But also it looks like halfway through the canal, there's a port town here, which I never would have thought. That's it. So that's interesting. Ali Shamira, which is a civilian airport which is cool uh, some maps like the Persian Gulf and Nevada have lots of civilian airports and only a few military airports and it's cool to have like the flip opposite side of that too where you have lots of military military air bases but not a lot of civilian airports but it's still cool to see the occasional civilian airport for those of you who want to do simulate more of a more chill flight quote unquote Diffsuar airfield here Okay, it's these very short runways. I'm quite sure they're actually fairly thin runways, or like normal size, like width runways. But I, I would imagine that this is just basically just a uh, hel uh, heliport. So, airfield technically, you might be able to take off in a Yak 50, um, Yak 52, or maybe a Warbird, or maybe a uh, Christian Eagle 2 from this because it's a relatively short runway, but. This is def. I think this is definitely meant for rotary wing ops, and um, it's more of a heliport. And then Faid, lots of hardened aircraft shelters. Only one one way this time. Takian Station. Holy crap, there's a lot of air bases, like, literally right on the actual Suez Canal, which is interesting. Uh, Kibert Air, air Base. Hardened aircraft shelters all around there, on both sides. Two, two runways. Two runways with a taxiway going down the middle, question mark. See, I don't know if that was, maybe at one time this was the old airfield layout and they just like ha let, let it go decay and degrade over there. That's interesting. Okay, there's the, and there's the bottom of the Suez Canal. So we're just gonna take a quick little look here. So port town here at the beginning at Suez, which kind of makes sense to have a port at the beginning of the canal. Go up there. there to the port town and then it splits off at the end and you have Port Said up there okay all right so that takes care of all those air bases now we're going to cover the last few air bases here in the middle All right, this is Bill of BS Air Base. 
Lots of hardened shelters. Triple runway layout and a triangle, which is all very unique. Also, again, these sort of these nestled designs where you can have aircraft lined up here and down here ready to go, and you can have them take off in like a triangle pattern, which is unique. Hardened shelters all around. And also on this end, it looks like there's even like smaller runways up here. So I guess you could use them for helicopters, which is definitely an interesting choice. Huh. Interesting choice. I don't know if that's an it's an interesting choice choice of name for a town or I guess it's maybe a region. That would be interesting maybe to read up on the history of that. Inisha's Air Base. Hard and shelters all around. So it looks like an air military air base. This time the two runways cross. I guess that's a Maybe at one time that was another airstrip, but that's not any airstrip anymore. Oh, it, it, it's air base. So yeah, it is an air base. Duh. So it looks like this is a joint, this is a mixed uh, civilian military air base. So I guess if you want to use the civilian side, you land on runway 01 left with its ILS beacon. And on the transmission editor, it does that. Uh, if you want to use the military air base, you have to make sure you land on 01 right. And I guess there's this, maybe at one time that was an airstrip, but no, it's still an airstrip, 02. Not really marked as such anymore. Just kind of have to know that you can use it. I guess in emergencies. Lots of hardened shelters, lots of parking. 15th of May. Okay. 6th of October, huh? So I guess it's something that Egypt, um, Egyptians, Egyptian, I guess, uh, city designers or planners or whatever, or politicians there, sometimes I guess some of their newer towns or cities or developments, they name after dates, which is interesting. I want to see something on the map here before I go back up north. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, because that's definitely the Nile. I was wondering if it would go up into uh, the northern end of uh, Sudan. Because that's where a lot of stuff happens, too. It's in, our air, it's in our airport out there. So theoretically, we can have a couple more airports here. And, uh, and, uh, and also in uh, Syria, and, uh, Saudi Arabia on here. Uh, there's a couple, there's an airport there, there, all around. There's our attack camp beacon out in the middle of nowhere. Jordan, because Jordan also has its air bases and airports out that way. But back to keep being back to Cairo, so we can wrap this section of the video up. Because boys, it's probably gonna be forever just me going over the uh, territory and like different map uh, areas of the world. So let's see here. So that wraps up over there. There's really only two airports left, by the way, and they're both civilian. We have Cairo International with one, two, three air, uh, three runways. So I wonder how they declare them. Zero five right. Sorry, zero five left, zero five center, and zero five right. So that's right, center, left. Oh, well, that's interesting because I don't think we've ever had an airport uh, list out three runways in the same direction and have actually a left, right, and center. Um, the only airport that I might think that would even have anything close to that would be some of the ones in um, uh, Dubai over in on the per Persian Gulf map. But that's actually pretty interesting. But again, uh, also makes sense for Cairo to have a massive international airport. It is, after all, one of like the... it Egypt is... 
a pretty big tourist area just because of the fact you have the pyramids and like Egyptian culture and sort of like the one of the cornerstones of civilization is based off here. So it makes sense that there's a massive airport supporting the tourism industry that would spawn from that. Plus all kind of business and whatnot. A whole bunch of parking spots for aircraft here. But this is again a civilian airport. I will not stop you from spawning here if you so wish. It says Cairo International. All the terminals are here, obviously. There's your runways out there. And then there's Cairo West. Oh, wait. Holy crap, Cairo International. Like every single runway has an ILS, so it's ILS Heaven out there. Now we get to Cairo West, which has one. ILS Beacon out there. Again, civilian airport. Uh, two runways. No, three runways. One separate from the other two. So maybe that was a SAM site? Maybe that, maybe that, oh! This is one of those joint military uh, civilian air bases where this side's the civilian air ba airport, and then this side's the military air base. So that makes sense. All right, so that's an overview of the air bases on this map. There's Cairo itself. Um, yeah, Cairo's massive. I think Cairo's probably, by footprint, one of the biggest urban areas that we have in DCS. Now, I know, um, well, Dubai's pretty big. Tbilisi is decently sized. Las Vegas in Nevada is also decently sized. Damascus is also reasonably sized. Yeah, that's those are uh, the big cities I'm thinking on top of my head. Um, Krasnodar in Rush and the Caucasus is also decently sized. But I don't think any of them can beat out Cairo. Especially if you look at the greater Cairo area, just how big Cairo is. So that's neat. Uh, final thoughts on the map here before I uh, split this video off because it is getting pretty long. And uh, I want to do a uh, first impressions flight video. Uh, just holy crap, there's a, a lot of really useful military air bases here on the map. So you don't have to role play uh, military forces overtaking a civilian airport. No, there's actually military, a lot of military air bases here with hardened shelters um, for your missions. And plus, it's a bit more, you don't have to hand wave the fact that you're role-playing a civilian airport as a military air base if you need to use that as a target in a mission. So lots of really good air bases. Lots of really good navigational tools too. It's not like you're going to have um, the problem you have in some maps in DCS where you advance um, if you start using like some certain air bases, you're gonna have to put put down a manual TACAN unit all the time because it doesn't. The air base itself doesn't come with a TACAN station. Uh, there's lots of TACAN stations, lots of ILS state uh, beacons for runways. Uh, noticing quite a lot of also ADF beacons on the map, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty interesting spread of air bases too. There's a lot. Um, they are relative. It seems that they are relatively tight, though. Um, let's see here. I want to say we'll pick Inosh Air Base because it's a fairly extensive air base, and then we'll pick uh, Ben Gurion as the civilian airport over here. So we're gonna pick Tel North. Yeah, so we'll pick Tel North because it's. A relatively big air base and I just want to see what the distance is between the two so uh, only it's roughly 195 nautical miles between the two so that's interesting so definitely not like a stone's throw away from each other but that's still relatively close so that's gonna be this is gonna be an interesting map for making missions because you're, I don't know if you're going to need to take a whole lot of external tanks on missions on this map. Um, the combat, uh, if we just keep, if we just consider this to be the combat box, 
effectively, where the vast majority of your operations are taking place in this section of the map. You really only have, uh, disregarding any, uh, you know what, so you don't fly near the air bases, like this middle section here is about 160-ish nautical miles across of actual combat space, which will be interesting. I'll have to go back and see how, what, what this uh, space is in between in the Caucasus map, but this is going to be an interesting map here. Huh. Also, we're really interesting for naval uh, operations, because you can have naval operations down here in the Red Sea. So you, have, you can have uh, naval operations here, and then you can have like long-range strikes from like Ramon Air Base or Kabert Air Base uh, flying down here and trying to intercept uh, shipping. Or you can come like from up here in the Mediterranean and down south through here, through the Strait. Probably lots of interesting roads. I'm curious to see what the road network is like in here for convoys. That'd be another thing that'd be interesting. So, let's see here. You know what? So there is a fairly sparse road network. Now, I'm not quite sure this is Mount Sinai down there. Huh. There's a couple of roads here that you can use for on-road convoys, but this is very much mostly flat open terrain up here with some small mountains for cover. So that'll be interesting. Uh, lots of good tank warfare can be had in this area. In the desert with some mountains for the occasion or a little bit of coverage. Definitely have a lot of uh, knife fighting in the mountains up here. Be unique. And that'd be interesting. I think that uh, you can also have some interesting combat in here because if you have a uh, dense urban, f once you get over here, the uh, road network is pretty dense because of um, the actual city. Lots of large fighting inside of a city. Trying to do close air support inside of a city. Trying to see what this... Maybe trying to fight in uh, this in the uh, river delta here. With all like the uh, farmlands. That would be interesting. So... I do think this map has quite a lot of potential. The more and more I'm playing around with it right now, um, I'm just pl placing units and having them go around. Ooh. I think I just found a new favorite map. So, before this, get, before this uh, video tutorial, as for this uh, first impressions view of the actual map and from a mission editor's perspective, uh, wrap it up. Uh, I'm wrapping it up here uh, with my final thoughts, first impressions. It seems like a relatively tight area because you have this huge map that they've given us with uh, parts of Syria, uh, parts of the lower end of Syria map modeled all the way up to North Lebanon, which is not insignificant. This is a significant amount of Syria that um, they haven't modeled yet, but it would be really cool if we can get some modeling in here of that. So we have the entirety of Israel modeled, or at least in-game as part of the map. Um, if they model that part of Syria, uh, Israel right there, uh, parts of Lebanon, and maybe even Damascus, that would be, like, huge. Uh, that would really expand out the uh, play area. Uh, Jordan would be pretty cool if we even got like, one or two, a few couple of Jordanese air, uh, airports out there. I know that um, Jordanian Royal Air College is somewhere out there, I think, from Syria. Um I have a couple of maps, a couple of air bases and parts out here from uh, Saudi Arabia. That's it. Saudi Arabia down here. That'd be neat. A couple more airports out here maybe to like expand the gameplay down further south. But yeah, this is actually just even having this play area right here. That This is the big area of uh, Sinai map. So this is going to be... Ooh...
this is going to be interesting, because I would also imagine that there's not a whole lot of, looks like it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of fortifications built up here on Sinai. Let's go to, there's only a couple of like fixed sites, so you can have a lot of interesting fun, I'd imagine, setting up uh, mobile SAMs and having mobile SAMs constantly move back and forth throughout this middle section here, trying to like give their ground forces a little bit of coverage. Because let's see here, if we do Egypt. And a cool thing about e and the cool thing is they with this um, app update, they went through and they actually added units to Egypt. So Egypt should now have proper SAM systems. I don't know why there's two. Huh, that's just a weird bug. But we just want mostly the, uh, TSA-3 missile launcher. There we go. All right, so we want this launcher here. Just want to see how far it'll go. Yeah, so its detection range for the radar goes out to Israel, but its, it's actual effective range, like an SA-2, which is an older site, not, uh, not you're not covering the entirety of this battle space here. Uh, let's see here, SA-3, definitely sh way shorter range. Like, uh... SA-6, again, relatively short-ranged. SA-11 is not going to cover the whole thing. Now, if once you get into the SA-10s, then your all bets are off. The all bets are off there. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. All right. Lots of things to play around with. Um. So I'm going to call it here. I keep on saying I'm going to call it here, and then I keep on thinking, oh, holy crap, there's this other thing I'm going to try. Um, so there's definitely, that's I would say that that's so far a glowing review of this map for our mission creators. Um, lots of interesting things where the entire like sec uh, central section of the uh, map here is going to be a good place for battles. Um, lots of interesting terrain to f uh, fly over on the uh, ends uh, on Israel and on the now River Delta. Um, lots of ocean, lots of like more lush areas, definitely this big desert map here in the middle, some mountains down there. So with that, this is Loco S signing out for the mission editor portion of this tour. Uh, I'll get, I'll adding, I'll add a carrier and we'll try to do some, I'll try to see if I can get the carrier to go through the Nile River Delta and then I'll take a Tomcat and we'll fly out through Cairo here on the, up the now up the actual now. no, sorry. We'll have a carrier go through the Suez Canal, and then we'll have a, our Tomcat fly over the Nile River Delta here, fly over Cairo, see what some of the sites in Cairo, and then we'll probably load in another air, uh, maybe an F-15 or something, and fly around Israel, see how that's like over there, and see what there is all to see. So, until then, this is Lock OS, signing out for real this time.